Hello everyone, at the end of this video, you should be able to determine the melting point and boiling point of a substance from its heating curve and explain in molecular terms why the temperature of the substance remains unchanged during heating, during melting or boiling. In this video, I will go through heating curves only because your teacher will go through cooling curves with you in class. Let's say we want to determine the melting point of ice. So, what do we have to do? We have to set up the apparatus as shown on the left. Start heating the ice and record the temperature every minute until it is several degrees above the temperature at which the ice melts. Then, plot a graph of temperature against time. This is the graph that we will most likely obtain from the experiment. It is called the heating curve because the substance that we are investigating is being heated during the experiment. Let us now analyze the heating curve for the experiment. From P to Q, the temperature of the substance increases. Since the temperature of ice changes, there is no change in state and the substance is still in solid state as ice. From Q to R, the temperature of the substance remains steady at 0 degrees Celsius. Since the temperature of the substance does not change, there is a change in state and the ice melts. Hence, from the heating curve, the melting point of ice is 0 degrees Celsius. From R to S, the temperature of the substance increases. Since the temperature of the water changes, there is no change in state and the substance is still in liquid state as water. Okay, here comes my question. From P to Q, the substance is in solid state. From R to S, the substance is in liquid state. But how about from Q to R, the horizontal part of the graph? Melting starts at Q and ends at R. From Q to R, only a part of the ice has melted. The part of the substance that has melted will, re will be in liquid state as water while the part that has not melted will remain in solid state as ice. Hence, from Q to R, the substance is a mixture of solid ice and liquid water. So, what happens to the tiny particles in the ice when the ice melts? Recall that in solid state, Particles are closely packed together and held together by strong attractive forces or bonds between them. When we heat the ice from P to Q, the ice particles vibrate about their fixed position faster and more vigorously. Hence, the random Ke of the particles increases. When we heat the substance from Q to R, the temperature of the substance does not change. Hence, the random Ke of the particles does not change too. But where does the thermal energy from the heating goes to? It turns out that the thermal energy is used to weaken the strong bonds between the particles and the particles in ice move further apart. Hence, the potential energy of the particles increases. In summary, for P to Q and Q to R, the internal energy of the particles increases. For P to Q, only the random Ke increases. However, for Q to R, only the Pe of the particles increases. Remember, only one component of the internal energy, be it random Ke or Pe, can increase at a time.
Let's say now we want to determine the boiling point of water. What should we do next? We just, do, we just have to continue to heat the water until it boils and plot the heating curve. The heating curve will then become something like this. So, what is the boiling point of water? Recall that during boiling, the temperature of the substance does not change. Hence, from the graph, the boiling point of the substance is at 100 degrees Celsius. Lastly, so what happens to the particles in the water when water boils? Thermal energy supplied to the water is used to weaken the bonds between the liquid particles and the liquid particles move much further apart. Hence, the potential energy of the particles increases. However, it is important to note that the random Ke of the particles does not increase and the temperature does not change during boiling. The thermal energy supply also provides energy for the particles to push back on the surroundings into the air. We have come to the end for this long video. Thank you for your attention. Before you move on to the next video, please look at the learning objectives again and ask yourself whether you have achieved it. Are you also able to state the melting point of ice and boiling point of water? See you in the next video.